A doctor dee, doctor dee, doctor dee. Doctor dee, doctor dee, doctor dee. A doctor dee, doctor dee, doctor dee. Explain stuff. Hey everyone, Dr. D here, and in this video we are going to be covering chapter 29 from our Brock Biology of Microorganisms textbook covering epidemiology. So let's go ahead and get started. Epidemiology is defined as the study of the occurrence, distribution, and determinants of health and disease in a population. And with, with regard to health or public health, we're referring to the health of the population at a, as a whole. And it's good to understand that in developed countries, infectious disease cause uh, infectious diseases cause fewer deaths than non-infectious diseases. So, for example, uh, uh, infectious diseases are causing fewer deaths than, let's say, heart disease or cancer. However, in developing countries, infectious diseases account for nearly half of all deaths, speaking to the importance of epidemiology, the importance of modern health care with antibiotics and other medications as, as a whole. So the effect of control of infectious disease remains a challenge. Uh, as you can see with the current pandemic, you know, it, it's still a challenge and, and coordinating all these different countries and all these different systems uh, and all these different companies is, is a challenge. Epidemiologists rely on surveillance. What is surveillance? It's the observation, recognition, and reporting of diseases as they occur so they can try to get out in front of them. Epidemiologists can trace the spread of disease to identify its origin and mode of transmission. It's very important because if you don't know where the origin is, it's hard to prevent it in the future and to prevent its uh, uh, continuous spread. And also, if you don't understand the mode of transmission, it's also uh, impossible to break that link. And some terminology to understand uh, when we're speaking of a disease, there's a difference between the incidence of the disease and the prevalence of the disease. The incidence of a disease is the number of new cases of the disease in a given population or, or given period of time, I should say, whereas the prevalence is uh, of a disease is the total number of new and the existing cases in a population in a given time. Now, when we're speaking of the scope of a disease, we're talking about whether the disease is considered an epidemic, a pandemic, or an endemic. So let's, let's speak to each of these terms. An endemic disease is a constantly present disease in a population, but usually at low incidences. Uh, so this would be something that's always around, but not uh, exploding. Uh, for example, the common cold. Uh, or, you know, HPV, something like that. Whereas a disease is an epidemic when it occurs in a large number of people in a population at the same time. So you can think of this as a little explosion of, a, of a incidence cases in, in a short period of time. And a pandemic would be a more widespread, usually worldwide. So you remember with the current pandemic, it started out as an epidemic, but then later on it was categorized as a pandemic once it became more widespread throughout the world. And here you can see uh, the difference, visualize the difference between an endemic disease, again, low, low, president, uh, low uh, prevalence, I should say, <clears throat> uh, but, but consistent throughout time. Here you have an epidemic where there's a, a large number of new cases in a short period of time, and then a pandemic where it spreads worldwide. Also speaking to the scope of a disease, we can talk about a disease outbreak. An outbreak occurs when a number of cases of a disease are reported in a short period of time. And more terminology, uh, diseased individuals who show no or mild symptoms have subclinical infections. So a subclinical infection would be a diseased individual who shows no or mild symptoms. These individuals are also called carriers. So a carrier 
is typically somebody who does not show the disease or has very mild symptoms but is uh, carrying the disease and can spread the disease. Usually these carriers can spread the disease as well. Diseases are also described in terms of their virulence or relative pathogenicity. So what are the stages of a disease? Uh, remember that to cause a disease, a pathogen must replicate and grow inside of a host, uh, as well as attach or adhere to the host. Remember, that's an important uh, factor as well. A well-adapted pathogen lives in balance with its host. Obviously, a pathogen that kills off its host too quickly will also uh, perish because uh, you need a way of spreading from host to host. And if a pathogen d destroys the host, uh, then there's no way for the pathogen to continue to spread. So it's better uh, for the pathogen to be more of a chronic infection where the host and pathogen survive. However, when there are acute infections, the pathogen can be a selective force, meaning that the pathogen can cause death. What are the stages of disease? So once you have uh, become infected, that's called the infection stage. The organism invades, I should say attaches to, invades and colonizes the host. Next, you have the incubation period, the time between infection and the onset of symptoms. So here you would not have very, uh, you would not have symptoms or you would not have pronounced symptoms. Here, the, you would enter the acute period where the disease is at its height. This is where the disease is the easiest to, uh, to, to diagnose. And then there's a decline period where the disease symptoms are subsiding, hopefully. Uh, and then there is convalescence period where the patient rega regains strength and returns to normal. There's a couple more important terms for you as well. Mortality versus morbidity. Mortality is the incidence of death in a population, whereas morbidity is the, of a disease refers to the incidence of the disease, including fatal and the non-fatal diseases. So herd immunity, what is herd immunity? Herd immunity is defined as the resistance of a group to infection due to immunity of a high proportion uh, or uh, high proportion of the group. So usually when they're talking about herd immunity, they're talking about that your the population around you is highly immune to the disease. So they've been vaccinated or they've all survived the disease and, and they built a natural immunity towards the disease. Uh, usually this is upwards of 80% of the population in order to uh, obtain a herd immunity. So if a high proportion of individuals are immune to an infection, like let's say 80% of the population, then the whole population will be protected. And I'll show you why in the next slide. Immunized people protect non-immunized people because the pathogen cannot be passed on and the cycle of infectivity is broken. So here you can see, here's a situation where there's no immunity in the population. So red, the red person, uh, the rep, red person represents a, an infected person and the blue individuals are susceptible. So notice that in, in a scenario where no one is immune, the, the individual can make other people sick around them and then those people can infect other uh, uh, susceptible people and the disease just spreads like, uh, like dominoes. However, with herd immunity, these, are, these green individuals represent immune people. So let's say vaccinated people or people who have uh, uh, recovered from the disease. Now, when the in infected person meets these people, uh, those people do not become sick and do not act like dominoes spreading the disease to other people they encounter. And thereby, persons B and C are effectively uh, protected from the herd immunity. You see that here in scenario one, persons B and C would have become sick. And in scenario two, with herd immunity, persons B and C would not become sick. Only person A with the direct contact with the infected individual would have become sick.
So what are some modes of disease transmission? The pathogens can be classified by their mechanism of transmission, but all mechanisms have the following stages in common. They have to escape from the host, travel, and enter into a new host. The pathogen transmission can be direct or indirect. Direct means host-to-host -host transmission. This, this is where the infected individual transmits a disease directly to a susceptible host without the assistance of intermediary. So for example, uh, during the flu, you are coughing and sneezing, uh, people can pick up the flu without an intermediary. During the common cold, you are coughing and sneezing. There's no intermediary involved. STDs, this is, there's no intermediary involved. There's direct contact. Ringworm, this is skin-to-skin -skin contact. Notice how there's no intermediary in any of these scenarios. Whereas indirect host-to-host -host transmission occurs when transmission is facilitated by either a living or a non-living agent. So, for example, a living agent uh, would be a mosquito or a tick or uh, uh, lice or something. These are called vectors. Living agents are called vectors. Non-living agents, for example, a doorknob, bedding, uh, uh, you know, some inanimate object, these are called fomites. Does that make sense? So if, if, uh, if a mosquito bites me and then bites you and you get the, the disease, that's a, that's a vector. If I, if I touch a doorknob and then you touch a doorknob, that's, that's a fomite. Now, disease, disease carriers and disease reservoirs and control. So what is a reservoir? When we're speaking of uh, diseases, what is the reservoir of the disease? The reservoir are sites in which infectious agents remain viable, so they are living, and from which individuals can become infected. Uh, a number of infectious diseases are caused by pathogens that propagate in humans and animals. So in this case, the animal would be the reservoir. For other pathogens, non-living matter serves as the reservoir. So for example, soil could be a reservoir. Um, with, the, with the case of Clostridium tetani, the causative agent of tetanus, the soil is the reservoir for this bacterium that causes tetanus. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, animal diseases, the animal could be the reservoir of the disease. So the reservoir is where did an individual become infected? It could be a living or a non-living uh, reservoir. So what are zoonoses then? Zoonoses are diseases that primarily infect animals, but occasionally transmitted to humans. So if you can pick up a disease from an animal, this is a zoonosis. Certain infectious diseases have complex life cycles involving an obligate transfer from a human, uh, from a non-human host to humans, followed by transfer back to the non-human host. So, when you 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 could be an obligate part of this pathogen's journey or not an obligate part of the pathogen's journey. But if you're picking up a disease from an animal, this is typically called a zoonosis. So major epidemics are usually classified as common source or host-to-host -host epidemics. So what is a common source epidemic? A common source epidemic usually arises from contamination of water or food. That would be the common source. So for example, cholera is caused by Vibrio cholerae, and it's uh, usually from contaminated water sources. In a host-to-host -host epidemic, the disease shows a slow, progressive rise and a gradual decline. So, for example, uh, influenza, chicken pox, uh, COVID. Carriers. Carriers. What are carriers? Again, we talked about carriers before. Uh, subclinical carriers. Pathogen infected individuals showing no signs of clinical disease. They are potential sources of infections because you could be a carrier, you could have sub subclinical uh, uh, infection, you could, you could show no signs of a disease, uh, but you could uh, be the source of infection. You can cause infections in others.
These are also called asymptomatic carriers. These may be individuals in the incubation period of the disease, so they themselves have not uh, felt signs or symptoms of the disease. They can be identified using diagnostic techniques, including culture and immunoassays. So you could do a PCR test, for instance. Typhoid Mary is an example of a carrier. This was a lady who was a cook and would constantly spread uh, salmonella to people she would cook for, but her, she herself was not sick. All right, so nice little overview of epidemiology. Very important in today's climate, you know, as, as we're currently in the midst of a pandemic. I hope this was informative to you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment box below, and I'll catch you guys next time. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. A Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. A Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. A Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D.